Tuesday. What's up, everybody? Thanks for hanging with us. Sports Take, the place to be. Noon to 3 Eastern each and every Monday through Friday. He's Barrett Brooks. I'm Rob Ellis. We'll be joined a little bit by D Gun. D Gun taking care of some business. So we will talk to Gunner uh, shortly. See everybody in the chat section. What's up, guys? How you making out? Hey, by the way, I, and I, they will, this, this individual, and I'm sure there'll be more than him, will go nameless. But uh, this individual who was a Cowboys fan yesterday, interestingly enough, was nowhere to be found. Couldn't, right, couldn't right. find him with a detective, a GPS, a map, you know, you name it, with a PI. Couldn't find him. Somehow, interestingly enough, he crops back in and creeps in today to the chat to gloat about a player being injured. Now, if that doesn't tell you all you need to know about Cowboys fans, instead of manning up and showing up after your team loses and saying, yeah, we lost, you hide. Then when a, a, an individual is injured, you gloat on it. That is all you need to know about the mentality of a Cowboys fan. I try to tell people this all the time. It goes deeper than just wins and losses. They are creeps, as if we didn't already know that. But anyway, I digress. Hi, Barrett. How are you? <laughs> man, I, I, come on, man. And, and you know what's going you know to be the messed up part? That Menchu is going to whoop their ass anyways. Yes, that's cool. That's cool. That's going to make it even sweeter. Right. The right, mustache right. is going to whoop some ass. I'm right. with you, man. I am what so, I, I mean, am. With regardless, you. you know, I'm not even worried about it, bro. Yeah. I'm it's, with it's, you. It's, we act like he's not a starting quarterback, like he hasn't done it before, like he hasn't played at a high level before. And, and needless to say, he's interviewing for 31 other teams. Good point. Yep. Good point. Bro, he's going to rock and roll. He's going to yeah. wheel this team to win. Yeah. I, he's I think looking it's... forward to this. Oh God! Are you kidding me, man? Can you yeah. imagine that? Yeah, he is. I mean, he is going to be on on all cylinders. Minshew mania will be in full effect. He will, he'll be out there, bro, ready to eat his young. He will. <laughs> he 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 he's going to be chewing on 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 on, 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 on glass on and nails. And, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, he just man, it, Minshew will be ready. He's, he's going to have the have... bomber jacket out. He he's going to be you know Tom Cruise and uh bruh, in top gun. There, there, it's there's going to be question. so bad. He. You know what he's going to eat for breakfast in the morning? Gunpowder and drink hot sauce. That's what's going down. <laughs> he's going to be absolutely ready because he knows that this is this is his chance to go and take this, you know, take the reins and show everybody, look, I'm a starting quarterback. I just happen to be on a team with a great quarterback. Yeah, no, no question. All right, so let, let's hit it. Let's start with the big news. It came down after we got off the air yesterday, uh, late in the afternoon, uh, that – that Jalen Hurts is in fact injured, injured the shoulder on the play that we talked about yesterday during the game. Uh, he got hit pretty hard late third quarter, about a buck 11 left Barrett in the game. It was uh, Travis Gibson uh, landed on him very hard. He stayed down for a minute. Uh, we know my lot recounted that he was going to help him up and he, he was telling him, stay down, bro, stay down. And he said, help me the bleep up. He pulls him up. He stays in there. In fact, after there's a stoppage uh, on the very next play, he throws an out route to Devontae right on the money. Exactly. So, she's saying, yourself, well, so like two observations. One, uh, the dude's tough as nails, right? Number one. But number two, you're thinking, all right, he's got to be all right if he can rip that ball like that. Um, so then he, bowl, he threw a bomb, like a 60 yard bomb, also, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Perfect throw to, to AJ later in the so fourth quarter. You know his fourth quarter numbers were, were awesome. Like it's crazy. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know how to explain it. So he, after the injury, Barrett, seven for 10, 110 yards, a rushing touchdown and a two point conversion. This was just after the injury. So it speaks to the, to, you know, the mental and the physical toughness of the guy. But so that goes down. And at first you're like, Oh, here we go. Like, here we go is the first reaction to it. Naturally, you know, and, right, and you, right, right, right. you know, you get concerned and you start looking at the, the bigger picture. Now, I heard Nick Sirianni today on the on the WIP morning show, and he downplayed it. Now, read it any way you want to read it. Uh, either competitive advantage, doesn't want to tell Dallas who to prepare for. You could still have to prepare for Jalen. I, I would say it's likely you're not going to see Jalen this week uh, for the most part. You want to err on the side of caution with a throwing shoulder of a, of a quarterback. Um, but the good news is this doesn't appear to be long-term. My guess is if, the, if this was a – if you're in a neck-and-neck -neck battle – with say the Cowboys for the for the NFC East and for the number one seed, he's probably playing on, on right. Saturday, right? Exactly. You're not, although you don't have it locked up, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, so you're going to err on the side of caution and, and hey, rest that thing up, man. Well, now, 
I don't know what this means going forward, what it means for the Saints, what it means for the Giants game. I don't know. But the good news is he should be back for the playoffs. Let me tell you like this. If this was a must win, he would play in this game. I'm not going to say he has a boo-boo. I think he's just sore. Just thinking about the position that the Eagles are in, you have three games to win one game. Why chance it by going out and playing and, and being stupid about it? So, I mean, that's the biggest thing. Right. When you have a reserve quarterback that is as good as Minshew, why not send him out there with a, with a superior offensive line, running back, wide receivers, and now tight end, and go ahead and win the game for Dallas uh, – uh, and, and down in Dallas anyways? They have full confidence. This team has full confidence in Garner Minshew. Mm -hmm. So – Save him for the playoffs. We don't need him right now. I promise you, Jalen Hurts just has a boo-boo. That's all. Okay. He's just a little sore. Mm -hmm. If they needed him, he'd be there for the team. Trust me when I say that. They kind of feel like, all right, we kind of did it, did him a little dirty by running him, well, allowing him to, to run a little more than he should have. And people say, well, you know, he picked the, you know, the read was, uh, yes, the read was for him to pull the ball. The, the Bears had a whole week to, 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 you know, a week extra to formulate a game plan to make sure that he would pull it. That way he could hit Jalen Hurts. Mm -hmm. I'm a little pissed off because all they had to do was just instead of just calling RPOs and read options, just hand the damn ball off. That, Run 15 lead, one jab 32. Yeah. Just hand it off. Th that's my biggest issue, Barrett. Uh, like, I know if it's an RPO, there's options, which means if Jalen sees something he likes, he's going to keep it. That's just what he is. That's how he's trained to go about it. Okay. I respect that. Take it out of his hands. Yes. Yes. Just, it's okay to give a thousand yard running back a traditional handoff every once in a while, man. Da, da, da. It, where, where you don't have to wait till 634 left in the second quarter, you know, where you've run 18 plays before you hand the ball off to it's not like you have some scrub back there you have a really good <laughs> number one you have a really good running back and a really good blocking offensive line right, right. Okay. Oh, oh oh by the way by the way is 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 he's actually ranked what fifth as far as yards in in, in the nfl yeah fifth yeah are you kidding me so, come on bro th therein lies the issue for me and, and you're also i get it any given sunday you never know but you're Let's face it, you, you're playing a Bears team that isn't great. I don't know that you have to take the chances of having your quarterback run it 17 times in that setting. That Therein lies my issue. Like, take it out of his hands to an extent. Give it to your guy. Let your big boys up front eat in the run game. Exactly. And, and keep Hurts out of harm's way to an extent. I understand he's in the pocket. He might scramble. There's going to be some RPOs. He's going to keep at the goal line. Okay, that's the cost of doing business. That's the NFL. Yes, Dudes get exactly. hurt. Yep. But I think that Steichen and Sirianni, and maybe they can learn from this, have to understand, you know, that that you know sometimes the discretion is a better part of valor. Like live to see another day is where I'm at, bro. At the end of the day. You, you, you sometimes you know, I understand how dynamic he is as a player and how much he opens up the offense when he's out there. Yeah, we understand when you run these RPOs that he gives you that extra second to make a great play. He takes a good pig play and makes it a great play just because his presence on the field, his presence with the RPO. But hey, when you're playing against an inferior team like the Chicago Bears. Sometimes you just got to take it and be like, all right, you know, I'm just going, I'm just going to run it. I'm just going to pound. I'm going back to the old school football, back to 1995, running behind a fullback and making things happen. Yeah. Sometimes you got to get back to that. You know, so back to back to when I had, you know, we ran 19 Bob with 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 with, with Kevin Turner leading up as a fullback on the on the on the Mike linebacker. Right. And 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 having um, you know, Charlie going or Ricky Waters going down the field 30 yards on a big play. So yes, you gotta give it that, that old school football. And there's nothing wrong with that. Right. Let yeah. all the naysayers keep doing what they're doing. Yeah, I I I I'm with you, Barrett. And that's here's the here's the other thing that I that I do worry about. And and I I, I feel good that this is not a serious injury. Like I trust you. Oh, yeah. I know uh Gunner has talked to his sources and they 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 assured him like that trust me, this is 
you know, don't be losing sleep here. Right, Here's right, what worries right. me. Okay. If, if I, if I'm, if I, if you go into the assumption and this is not a guarantee, but if you go into the assumption that he doesn't play the rest of the regular season, in other words, like something happens where either Eagles lock it up or Dallas loses or Minnesota loses any of those scenarios, the Eagles are in, they have the one seed locked up. If they don't play in the next three games, you would go three games, a buy, and then you'd play. Barrett, the divisional round is not until January 22nd, 21st and 22nd. Are you – I was about to cuss. I'm sorry. Good morning, Mom. Hi, Mrs. Are Brooks. you kidding me? So here's the issue. Right, he can play till what? The 21st or the 22nd, if I'm doing my math right. So oh, they, they played on the 18th. Yes. He played the 18th. That was the game in Chicago. Yep. You're talking about a month and change here conceivably that he doesn't play now. So that number one, that worries me. That's a lot of time without playing a lot, of time, a lot of time. So then I wonder, do you adjust things a little bit, even if you have it locked up and try and get him out there for a little bit against the saints and, or the giants, if that's the case, you got to at least two series, a series here and there just to keep him sharp, keep him in tune with going on. I mean, that's too much to ask. That's a month out of not taking reps, quality reps, full speed. There's, you can try to simulate, but these guys don't even simulate it in practice. Right. I mean, they it's have walkthroughs the on Wednesday. No, yeah. it's, it's way different. Yeah. They have walkthroughs instead of going out there and and, 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 and practicing hard. Well, not saying they practice hard. And when they say a walkthrough, it, it's, right. it's actually a sprint through. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's not what you think where it's just there. there's no move. It, it, it's – it's a walkthrough, but it's intense, and it's not yeah. you're not hitting or anything like that. But no, it's, you, it's got on, yeah, you got on these little these but, little uh foam pads on your shoulders, you know. But yeah, they're going yeah. full speed. That's right. their walkthrough. When they're saying walk, we call it a walkthrough because we don't have pads. And once you put pads on shoulder pads and helmet, it's it's really pads, even if you don't have the bottoms on. It's right. pads. Right. But it's 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 fast, it's explosive. You get into your reads, you get into your marks, guys are going full speed, they're running full speed routes. J uh Jalen's going through his progression, all those things are happening. Mm-hmm. But you at least got to have him out there at least a series or two just to keep the blood and adrenaline and flowing, getting him, you know, uh, get him in tune with, you know, playing full speed football. Right. And then because Barnum you went back in. I'm looking at this. So, Barrett, tell me if I'm uh, if I'm off here, right, with my math. The last regular season game is January 8th. OK, yes. that's the Giants game. The Giants game. Assuming a bye, which would be the 15th. Exactly. You play Saturday, Sunday is the way, you know, with that, that part of the playoffs, you're playing Saturday, Sunday. So he is not, he wouldn't play until the 21st or the 22nd. You're absolutely right. My, your That's a long correct. time, man. It's a long, long time. Too long. That's yeah. too long a time to not play football, especially when you're going in and, it, and it's winter go home. You know what I'm saying? It's not like basketball and baseball where you get a game, right. you know, you get three games or, or, you know, three games. It's more so it's win or go home. You get one chance. Yeah, that's it. You're not one in a series, chance. man. It's exactly it's, it's, you yeah, get one chance. Elimination. You know, Am I worried you. about him not playing these next two weeks? I worry about that, dude. I'm worried. I don't I don't worry about him not playing against the Saints, but I do worry about him not playing against the Giants. Don't don't you but don't you worry like they're let's face it, they they err on the side of caution when it comes to this stuff. Absolutely. We know that you know we Absolutely. all you know go lose our mind. Here, here's what I wonder, Barrett. Let me ask you this. So I, I think we all have sort of grown to understand this is just the way they're going to approach preseasons where these guys are barely going to play, if, if at all. The difference is, as much as you want to win every game, if you lose week one, your season's not over. You lose week two, your season's not over if you're not particularly sharp, right? You lose division round, it is over. So Done. you got to – you he's got to play in one of these two last games. If I'm saying if that, if that shoulder's right, if it's not, that's different. But if that shoulder's right, you got to get this guy a little bit of time. in one of Just to make sure the timing's right between yes. his receivers. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Just, just little things like the offensive line, hearing his voice. When he said, you know what I'm saying? Those little things will yep. throw you off. Like there might be some penalties, pre-snap penalties with this Eagles team against Dallas because – you got to get used to hearing somebody else give the cadence. Mm-hmm. It's not like, you know, you get so in tune, especially with guys who like to jump the snap count, right. like Lane Johnson and Jordan Malata. So there might be some penalties because of that, mm-hmm. just because you don't, you're not used to what, what, what you've used to with, with Jalen. Yeah. And that's yeah, just going to be some tiring territory. issues. It's just natural yeah. that it, it's exactly. going to take a little bit. Yeah. Now the good thing is uh, Minshew, when he got that start last year, I, 
granted, it's the Jets. It wasn't – and the Jets of last year, which is a way different team than the Jets of this Absolutely, year. absolutely. But he goes 20 for 25, 242 yards, two TDs. He, he had a buck 33.7 uh, passer rating. Now, he stepped in very nicely, you know, in that game. But you and I have talked about this. He, a couple of those throws, you know, against maybe better corners, he, he's got to be careful. He has a tendency to sometimes underthrow a little bit, Okay. So he's going to have to lead his guys. I would think we're looking at a healthy dose of Miles Sanders. Like you're, you're not going yes. to see Miles Sanders short at handoffs this week, I would guess. Right, right, right. I mean, this is this is this is this is also his audition. You know what I'm saying? This is he's going yeah. to get regular handoffs. Right. Now they can. Let me let me let me let me also preface this. They can run RPOs with him, but is is it's an RPO the same thing they kind of ran for for um for, for Nick Foles. Yeah, exact same thing. Mm-hmm. But it's it's literally a run to the running back, and or no or you're <laughs> keeping and throwing. Or you're throwing it. Yeah. There's not the third part of it. It's not a three exactly. pronged. Yeah, so it's just it's just two options instead of three options. Yeah, and they'll be able to do that because they have um they have their their tight end back with Dallas Goddard being back, yeah. That, let's just point that out. That. Goddard's activated, FYI. So so remember the play. chemistry that they had against the Jets last year. Mm-hmm. The tight end is always a quarterback's best friend, bro. Always a quarterback's best friend. And with the RPO that they run, is either hand it off to the running back or uh, um, uh, Dallas Goddard runs a little out. You throw it out to him because the wide receiver comes down and picks the guy that has him man-to-man. Or you throw it to the guy that picked, which is usually uh, Smitty. Okay. So it's still a run option with Sanders, but then you have two passing options with Goddard and um, Smitty. Okay. So I mean, it's still a three point when you use that that type of, but it's not. No, Garner Mitchell is not going to run the option play. They don't want him to run the option. Play. He doesn't want to run the option play. Mm-hmm. Not saying he's a bad athlete. He's a functional mobility quarterback. Yeah, I mean, he is what he is. Around. Yeah, I mean, but, he, right. He's he'll, he'll he can move in the pocket, but he's he's exactly. not a threat to take off and exactly. rip off he's 10, 15 running. yards. Yeah, he's not going to rip nothing. You know, just like Foles wasn't going to rip. And Foles was a good athlete. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Foles was, you know, Foles actually could have played basketball in college. Yeah, he was a he had D one offers to play. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I, I'm saying this: this team will still be equally effective. Well, a little below equal. I'm not saying you know because Jalen Hurts is his own different beast, but they'll be truly effective against anybody they play against. Yeah. So let, let's just let and to your point. We'll get to in a, in, a, in a second here, but let let's look at what they're they're going to be missing out on I, again if he doesn't play. It's not a guarantee, but you read between the lines, it's probably not likely. So Hurts, 35 total touchdowns, Barrett. 22 in the air, 13 on the ground. 3,472 passing yards. I uh, mentioned 22 touchdowns, five interceptions. Completing 67.3, a 104.6 passer rating. Rushed for 747, 13 touchdowns, uh, almost five yards per carry. The thing that th- you look at, Barrett, that's interesting, 153 rushing attempts through uh what is it 14 games he played right 14 yeah. 13 and one so is that a little high for your taste could it could it have been dialed back a little bit or because i know you you're the mindset of like this no. is who he is this is what they do no i i i don't think that it's i don't think that it's a lot in the aspect of what you have at quarterback position I mean, he, that to me, that was a freakish accident. Him falling down on him like that, you know what I'm saying? You 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 can't cage a, a stallion up. You got to let him roam. You know what I'm saying? And, yep. and that's what he is. You always run the risk of getting hurt and playing football. It's a gladiator sport. It's just what happens. He can get hurt inside the pocket. You know what I'm saying? On that play, the guy fell on him, and that's what happened. It happens to all quarterbacks. I still don't think that. You can take that away from him because he's 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 just that good. You got to keep that, you got to keep that intangible always in effect. It's always got to be in the defense's mind that he can do it. Okay. So I mean, I, I'm I'm still good with it. You know, regardless of that, I'm still good with it. I just think that you still can hand the ball off more than you have. That's that's the biggest thing I'm saying. Right. Run some damn regular run plays. That's all I'm saying. Just run some. Well, I think the other thing you have to – that's a little bit dangerous if you just look at that 153 rushing number. So keep in mind, they count kneel downs as rushing attempts, number one. Number two, a lot of those are sneaks where 
you're you're you could speak to this better than I can. Your center and your guards take the brunt of those, as opposed to your if Jalen keeps on those. So you, I, again, it is still a lot of rushing attempts, but I, but it's not quite. It's a little bit misleading because the Eagles sneak it a ton with him successfully by you, by the way. Bless you. Bless you. Um, and they also, you know, there's kneel downs involved. But I think as as he progresses and evolves, and he's, my God, has he evolved this year. It's incredible. Right. <laughs> You're going to see a little bit less, I think, I would think, of the RPOs just to maybe protect him from himself. Yeah. Is what I would yeah. like to see going forward. Protect him from himself, number one. But number two, it's not like you're you're lacking in 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 a running game if you don't run him with the ball. Right. I'm just saying you got a pretty daggone good back that's sitting there that's not being used. You know what I'm saying? Agreed. Like in all actuality, I really believe that you know Miles Sanders should have like 1,200 yards, 1,300 yards. He's that good of a back. He should have that many yards with the offensive line that we have. He should have like maybe 12, 1,300 yards. You know, with his explosiveness, the way he's run the ball, the way he's learned to run the ball, how he's in sync with how his blocking is, how to set his blocking up. He is, he is, he's that work right now. So we need to use him a little more, mm-hmm. you know. But then saying that, it's a double edged sword. Run the risk of him getting hurt, you know. So, I mean, you just yeah, have those. But, but I, I, you know, I'd rather, t- I don't want Miles to get hurt either, but I'd rather take my right. chances with a running back getting <laughs> right. involved, you know, in that, in that setting than, than my quarterback. Hell, use dump truck a little bit. You know, I, I, I call, I, that's what I call, um, uh, um uh, Boston Scott. Boston Scott. I call him dump truck. Yeah. You know, like two years ago, he got a little, he got a little thick, man. You know what I'm saying? So I start calling him dump truck. <laughs> it's stuck with, I, I stuck in my head, it stuck with me and, 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 and you know, yeah. But dumb truck, man, he can play, man. He can, he can run the pill. He runs it between the tackles just as good as anybody because he gets lost in there. Right. People don't know where he is, and the next thing you know, he's got 10 yards. Yeah. Run dump truck a little better. You know what I'm saying? No, I hear you. Listen, I hear you. And I think, look, some things are unavoidable. Some things we know are just going to happen. Randall Cunningham got 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 blown up in the pocket. You know, if we're going to go way back in, in time for this. Like, stuff happens. It's like, right. understandable. Right. Right. Um, right. But I, I would just – there to an extent like to see them take it out of his hands a little bit more as we go forward here because this guy's just so darn valuable now thankfully and this has kind of been the mo all year barrett for the most part when they've lost somebody it hasn't been the killer blow where he's done for the year yes yeah they've usually had you know almost every one of these guys i'm trying to think so goddard comes back and the only one we're waiting on beyond what happens with Jalen is cj gardner johnson right that's it yep as yep. far as the big boys <laughs> so you know for the most part they've gotten these guys back avante's back yeah, he was- Avante yeah, Davis is back, etc. Uh, so you're gonna get you're gonna get uh Blake Reed Brankenship back, I think. It's, yeah, it's, it's going towards right. that. Right. Um we we you're right, we've been relatively, relatively. Uh so Derek Barnett and CJ Garner Johnson, the only two that really Yeah, and Barnett you lost for the year, but but right, right, and right. no disrespect to him. But I mean you you can survive that better than some of these other guys, you know, for sure. But I was just um, thinking, I thought about this like a week ago. What if he was there? The rotation that we have would oh, have God. <laughs> with yeah. him too, even though he was a you know frustrating player. He could still play, bro. He could still maybe, play. Uh, yeah. And you're right. I mean, uh, but maybe guys are taking advantage of those extra reps, you know, and those snaps yes. that they're getting. Yeah, absolutely. In, you know, his absence. Absolutely are. All right. So here's what we're gonna do, Barrett. When we come back, um, we'll get a little bit more into Goddard coming back and the impact that has on the offense. The Eagles went. From yesterday being, depending on where you looked, like a one-point favorite in this game, they're six-point underdogs now. That's a big swing, man. And yeah, you know, I guess it tells you a lot about the respect for Hertz. And you know, Dallas still has, looking like they have a crack in the you know door to get in. Um, but we'll talk about that. Hertz also went from being the front runner for the MVP to not being the front runner anymore. And so it, we'll it, it, it flipped immediately. That oh. you know. It flipped immediately. Uh, yeah, so we'll, we'll we'll get into all that. You know, the the blame game, just you know how good Minshew is and what he's actually going to bring to the table. And there's there's a lot to dive into. After that, we're going to get into the Cowboys a little bit. What they look like offensively, defensively. What Prescott has brought to the table. Pollard, who to watch for. Big we'll Steel's got some that. questions also. We'll answer that all that too. Yeah, good. Yeah, and we'll hit some of the stream uh, questions as well yep. uh, in in our in our chat room. We'll do that also uh, a little bit later. Our NFL segment. Our NFL segment, Barrett, is going to include uh, best turnaround teams that we've seen this year. 
teams that went from bad last year to either good and or possibly playoff contenders will be part of what we do. Birthdays and movies and all that good stuff that we usually do. Uh, Gunner will be coming, uh, coming by soon. So uh, don't move. We got you. Barrett Brooks, Rob Ellis. We're Sports Take, Jacob Sports YouTube Network. I'm going to tell you about Jim Murray and Principal Financial Group because finding the right person to invest your hard-earned dollars and cents is a scary proposition. And I uh, I was at the front of the line trying to find the right person for a long time. I did, and I want you to be with the right person as well. Whether that's retirement planning, 401k review, insurance review, employee benefits that you're trying to set up if you're a business owner, any of those, and, and, and then some. You can reach out to Jim and give him a call. I know I've entrusted my IRA, my 401k rollovers with Jim, and I couldn't be any happier. You will be too. 610-996-4751 is how you reach him. One more time, 610-996-4751. You could email him as well, murray, M-U-R-R-A-Y dot Jim at principal.com. That's murray dot Jim at principal.com. Post game show with Seth Joyner. I knew that they had a running game. Derek Gunn. He has put in the effort. Devin Caney. Had we not won the Super Bowl, what would we be saying? And Mike Missanelli. Well, you know how Philly is. Post game, now streaming on the 6ABC family of apps.